Good morning and welcome to St. Mary's Anglican and Episcopal Church in Rotterdam. Today we are having a service for Christ the King Sunday. This is the end of our year, church year. It is the last Sunday before the beginning of Advent. We hope you find this service welcoming, blessing, and also challenging. Please join with me as we begin. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is Christ the King. Please join with us as the choir leads us in this hymn. We move into a time of confession. This prayer of confession is written specifically for Christ the King Sunday. Please join with me. The kingdom is yours, but we turn away from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The power is yours but we trust in our own power and strength. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The glory is yours, 
but we fall short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gradual or gospel hymn today is The King of Love My Shepherd Is. And I commend these lyrics to you because if I lose my way during the sermon, you can just go back and reread these lyrics and you'll get the message for today. Please join with our choir. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Our gospel reading for today follows directly after the parable of the talents from last Sunday, the 25th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew. We begin at the 31st verse. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. 
Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, <clears throat> excuse me, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are the members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. <clears throat> I come this morning speaking to you as a sheep, as someone who is blessed to be a sheep. I've brought along my friend Penelope, you all know I like my sheep, as a reminder to us that we are called to be sheep. This story, this final parable in the Gospel of Matthew makes it pretty clear that we would prefer to be on the side of the sheep than the side of the goats. Understanding, of course, that Jesus is speaking metaphorically and that the animals who are goats are not actually evil. Please don't go out and abuse a goat later today. It probably sounds a little weird for someone to stand up and say, I'm a sheep, and be pleased about that. In English, being sheepish is not always a good thing. We tend to criticize people who are behaving like a sheep. We use this as a way of saying that someone is blindly following along. And indeed, this comes from truth. Sheep follow. They're very good at following. They will follow their shepherd but they will also follow each other, follow each other, even if that means one is going in completely the wrong direction. I'm told in, in Dutch it's much the same. Somebody being a sheep and just following along rather passively is not necessarily a good thing. I saw a video clip this past week. There are many of them. I don't recommend that you go down this particular rabbit hole online because it would take hours, but there are video clips, particularly from the United States, of people who are anti-maskers um, being escorted out of places where they are required to wear a mask, refusing to do so. And the clip I saw this past week was of one gentleman being escorted out by the police for making a scene, yelling and screaming at the employees in a particular establishment. And as he was escorted out, having been warned repeatedly that this was private property, the governor had mandated the wearing of a mask, he screamed at the patrons left behind, you all are being sheep, like this was a huge insult. And I immediately thought, you know, if I were there, I think I would stand up and say, thank you. Because as a Christian, I want to be a sheep. I want to follow Christ, the King. Blindly following might not always be a good idea. But if we look at this concept of being a sheep 
in a biblical sense. We understand that we are not blindly following anyone who calls. Instead, we are following our king who happens to be both a sheep himself, the Lamb of God, and the Good Shepherd, the King of Love, my Shepherd is. There is no getting around that this story today, this division of the sheep and goats, is about judgment. And that's a topic that makes people really nervous. We don't like to think about judgment. So let's take a step back and look at how judgment is dealt with in the Gospel of Matthew. It's important so that we understand what Jesus is saying here. If you take a stroll through the Gospel of Matthew, you will see the theme of judgment come up frequently. And what you will notice is that the people who challenge Jesus about judgment are challenging him in such a way as to justify themselves. Surely, I won't be judged. Immediately, a problem of pride, of hubris, of self-justification, a problem of separating myself away from everyone else. Well, they might deserve judgment, but not me. And every time, Jesus' answer is the same. God's judgment reaches everyone. It is holy and it is just. And in this passage, we find out it is also merciful. I know you're saying, wait a minute, the goats are sent off. But look at the story as Jesus tells it. The king of glory reveals himself in all his glory. Truth is staring these people right in the face. If there was ever a time for someone to say, oh, I get it now. I messed up. Oh, my goodness. Now is the time to do that when you see Christ the King in all his glory. And Jesus says to the sheep, to his brothers and sisters, to those of his flock, welcome. When I was sick, you fed me. When I was in prison, you visited. When I was naked, you clothed me. And they say, when did we do this? You see, the sheep were so busy just being sheep acting out in the mercy and the grace that they have received from Jesus Christ, that they were doing these things not to be good, not to get some sort of heavenly credit, but because as someone who is full of the love of their own shepherd, they didn't know any other way to act. Of course you give something to drink to someone who's thirsty. Of course you feed those who are hungry. Of course you clothe the naked. They received mercy from God. They followed their shepherd, and they extended mercy to everyone else. The goats, on the other hand, immediately say, When did we see you? We didn't see you. You weren't sick or in prison. Again, distancing themselves and trying to justify, well, surely if I had seen you, Jesus, I would have done the right thing. But Jesus calls them on that. No, you did see me because you saw my brothers and sisters, my creations, my beloved, my sheep. And you couldn't be bothered to extend a hand. When we come to this story of judgment, this division, we see that it is not so much Christ saying, I like you, I don't like you, you're pretty good, you're obnoxious. It's Jesus saying, you've made some choices. I've offered mercy. And you've either chosen to step into that or you've chosen to keep all the blessings for yourself to ignore the needs of others, and furthermore, in the larger context of this gospel, to justify that action by setting yourself above everyone else. The problem is, 
The throne only seats one, and that is Jesus Christ, our King. We have opportunities, choices every day to make a difference, to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, to offer the smile, to be people of forgiveness, to work through our anger instead of bottling it up and letting it explode on someone else. We have the opportunity to be sheep who are not passively following along, but sheep who are actively emulating their shepherd through kindness and grace and mercy. When my grandfather was living, he was not only a pastor in the Brethren Church, he was also for a short time one of the supervisors in a district. And he told the story about a different church in his district where um, one day a stranger walked in, a woman came in, she stood at the back, kind of shuffling, very hesitant. These were good, solid, Midwestern American people, farm people. This woman didn't fit in. And from her demeanor, and from her dress, and from what they had seen of her around town, they knew that she was someone who, shall we say, entertained a lot of gentlemen. She stood in the back, not knowing what to do. The service had already started, and she was frightened. And one of the ushers happened to turn and see her Elderly gentleman, three-piece suit, tie, tie clip. And he got up, and he very slowly made his way to the back of the church. And he offered his arm. And she put her arm through it, and he escorted her up to the very front of the church. And he sat down with her. And he went through the whole service, teaching her, talking with her, sort of being a temporary grandfather to her, making sure afterward, have you met my friend? And introducing her to other people. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Sheep are pretty cute. But they also know their shepherd's voice. They follow their shepherd. They listen to their shepherd. They know that the throne of heaven seats one, and they don't try to take that place. Be a sheep. Be thankful to be a sheep. It is a blessing not an insult. Amen. The choir is going to sing an anthem for us. King of all ages, throned on high.
King of all ages, throned on high, yet Savior too of those with faith, death at your onslaught died in fear, and grace triumphant rules supreme. In the assurance of this knowledge, we confess the faith we share, saying, Christ died for our sins. In accordance with the scriptures, he was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Let us with confidence present our prayers and supplications to the throne of grace. We pray for all those in positions of power, that they may govern with wisdom and integrity, serving the needs of their people. May your reign come. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, the sign of your reign, that it may extend your welcome to people of every race and background. May your kingdom come. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Christians of every denomination, that together we may come to understand the royal priesthood you bestowed on us in baptism. May your dominion come. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose commitment to truth brings them into conflict with earthly powers, that they may have the courage to endure. May your rule come. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this community of faith, that attentive to your word, we may always worship in spirit and in truth. May your reign come. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have taught us that the power of the heart is greater than the power of wealth and might. Hear us as we pray for the fulfillment of your reign. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our King. To him be glory and power forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn led by the choir is Tell Out My Soul.
God the Father, who has given his Son, Jesus, the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great high priest passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church, make you faithful servants of Christ, our King. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>